go ahead and fill in your biome chart while I go through this presentation. Everything on these slides are actually really important. I've narrowed down the exact details and facts that you need to know about biomes for the AP test. And everything on this chart is important. The first biome that you need to know is the temperate deciduous forest. And it is found in Europe, in Eastern North America. Think of the East Coast if you've ever been back there to New York or the Carolinas or Virginia. That's the type of forest they have. And deciduous means the leaves fall off the trees. And so that's what the word deciduous means. Uh, it's also around the Great Lakes and in Eastern China. So those are the main locations of the temperate deciduous forest. For the temperate deciduous forest, the rain is spread throughout the year. I used to live in North Carolina and we had rain year round. The leaves fall off the trees, which is uh, really beautiful. And then you have uh, a lot of trees without leaves for the winter. In the winter, you also have hard freezes and then warm, hot, humid summers. And these, this particular biome has good fertile soils because of the decomposing leaves and a dormant season. So when you have leaves that fall off onto the ground and they have time to decompose before the growing season again in the spring, then you end up with fertile soils. The next biome you need to know is the temperate grasslands. And so in America, we call that the prairie. And in Russia, they call it the steppe. And so you may read literature or see a movie in, set in Russia and like they're talking about the steppe. That's really their prairie. So when you don't have a lot of rain, you can't grow a lot of trees. And so this particular biome has limited rain um, it does get big thunderstorms and snowstorms, but not quite enough to support a big forest. And so instead, it supports a lot of grasses. Now, the middle of our country gets huge winter storms, and it's very cold. So Nebraska and the Dakotas are very cold in the winter. And then in the summer, it's the complete opposite. They are very hot and very humid. The features um, are the best feature and the most well known of the temperate grassland is its topsoil. And so decomposing grasses and buffalo poop, I mean, that's the real deal. They uh, decompose in the winter and make great, great, great topsoil. So some of the most fertile soil in the world is in our temperate grasslands. And because of that, most has been converted to agriculture. So it's considered an endangered biome because it's so good to grow food that the vast majority of it has been turned into cropland and very little remains as prairie. The next one is the temperate rainforest. And the temperate rainforest is found in our Pacific Northwest. So think uh, Oregon and Washington and Southern Alaska. So not all of Alaska, but Southern Alaska. It has abundant rainfall, so it gets uh, the same amount of rainfall as a tropical rainforest, but it's not hot. And so you have your mild temperatures. Now to a Californian, it would seem cold there, but the temperate rainforest does not get as cold as say Nebraska in the winter. So, and Seattle hardly ever gets rain, um, snow, sorry. So the temperatures are mild there. And these are my own two children several years ago in an old growth temperate rainforest in Oregon. So temperate rainforest is really important for the lumber and paper industry. If you ever go to Oregon or Washington, you might see paper mills. Um, so they process a lot of trees up there and turn them into lumber for our homes and paper to write on. Um, and the laws currently is that you have to grow back the tree. So when you cut down the forest, it has to be replanted. Alaska has the largest, so this is a little factoid here. Alaska has the largest rainforest um, and old growth forest that has never been logged in the world. And that's just a, a fact you need to know about Southern Alaska. 
So now we have the tropical rainforest that most people think of when you say rainforest, they're thinking of the tropical rainforest. But don't forget that there's also the temperate rainforest that we have in, in America. But the tropical rainforest is located near the equator on almost every continent. And it's characterized by abundant rainfall. And it is warm year round. So it does not have a dormant season where life um, doesn't really grow. It, because of the heat and rain, it grows all the time. And so this is why it has poor soil. So if you have leaves that fall or branches that fall, then they're immediately decomposed and do not have time to remain in the soil and make the soil more fertile. And so this is why if you chop down a tropical rainforest, the soil is pretty bad and it's not good for agriculture. And also it doesn't easily grow back. So if you you know, take away the farms and you try and let the tropical rainforest grow back, it doesn't really because it doesn't have enough fertility in the soil. Next, we have the tropical dry forest. So this is also near the equator. And so our tropical rainforest is by the equator and our tropical dry forest is by the equator. And a lot of people think of India. So if you've ever seen the forest in India with the tigers, um, then that is really uh, the tropical dry forest. There is some also in Africa and South America and Northern Australia. So Northern Australia is kind of a famous one. That's why um, it is underlined. The rainfall is highly seasonal. So it means that at times it has abundant rainfall that causes flooding and then low rainfall, which leads to fires. And my picture here is covering up, but that says low rainfall, which leads to fires. It's warm year round. Um, it has erosion prone soil. So take a look at the soil there. And if the soil is left bare, it's prone to erosion. If it's covered in plants, the roots of the plants hold the soil in place. So a lot of this biome has been turned to agriculture as well. The next biome is the savanna. The most popular place that people think of for the savanna is Africa. And that's really the place that would be most likely asked about on your test. So think of the Lion King and you saw this part here where you have the big acacia trees and then you have the grasses. So the savanna has uh, low rain overall, but it has a, a big rainy season. And you may have seen documentaries about uh, the wildebeest that migrate to where it's going to rain. Um, so it does have a, a big, big rainy season, but overall throughout the year, it's it's fairly dry. And again, it supports grasses mostly instead of trees. So next we have the desert and the desert is also found on most continents at 30 degrees north latitude and 30 degrees south latitude. Not everywhere where it's 30 degrees north latitude and south latitude, but in a lot of places. And that has to do with convection currents and weather patterns that you will learn about uh, later on. And you will see why um, this 30 north and 30 south don't get a lot of rain. So for us, our closest desert is up in Palmdale, Lancaster, and it's the Mojave Desert. And it's about at 34 degrees north latitude. And so again, that's right in that range. Um, again, but there's a lot of places that are at 30 north and 30 south that aren't desert. So it's not a rule, but it's a trend. Now, if you've ever been up to Palmdale, Lancaster in the winter, it is really, really, really cold. And in the summer, it's really, really, really hot. So we have extreme differences. So some of the features of deserts is that we have different types of deserts. So some are like the Saharan desert that has sand dunes. 
whereas our desert, the Mojave, has drought-resistant shrubs, and then we have Joshua trees in our desert as well. And then you have like cactus and um, in the uh, Sonoran Desert, like by Phoenix, they have um, saguaro cacti there. And in order to live in the desert, you need to have very distinct adaptations that help you to survive. Now we have the tundra, which also gets really low rain. Now it's in the high latitudes that surround the poles. So around the Arctic in the north and the Antarctic in the south, you have the tundra. So the tundra, does it has very little rain. Sometimes people call it a frozen desert, but it is not a desert, it's its own biome. It just gets very little rain like the desert and it is very cold. And so you get these low shrubby plants um, up in the tundra, but it's really important ecosystem. So you have very little day daylight in the winter and then huge amounts of sunlight in the summer. And that light leads to abundant productivity. So productivity is the amount of energy made by your producers through photosynthesis. And so if you're a plant up in the tundra, and this is some plants and uh, grasses up there, and it's summer and you get 23 and a half hours of daylight, you're gonna photosynthesize like crazy and make lots of copies. So the plankton up there make lots of copies of themselves, the grasses, the shrubs, and a lot of animals go up there to feed in the summer. And so it's enormously important for migratory animals. A lot of people will see pictures of the tundra and they're like, what does it matter if we drill for oil up there? It's so ugly, but it's actually super important for animals that live down where we are. They go up in the summer to feed because of the high productivity. And so the tundra is actually a really, really important biome. Now it has permafrost soil. So that means the soil does not fully melt in the summer and it, it remains permanently frozen. That's what permafrost means. Um, now there is some melting with climate change of the permafrost, which is a topic that we will get to later on. Next, we have the Boreal Forest. Sometimes it's called the taiga. So these are two names for the same biome. And if you look up here in green, you will have the area with the taiga. So you can see in the United States, we don't have taiga. Um, it is really uh, right between um, the deciduous forest and the tundra. So this area up here is tundra, and then down here you have deciduous forest, prairie, and then you have temperate rainforest. So this in-between forest is the boreal forest, or the taiga. So it's in Canada, Alaska, Russia, Scandinavia. It can also be at very high altitudes of mountains. So if you've ever climbed or um, driven to the top of a big peak the Sierras or the uh, Colorado Rockies, it mimics a boreal forest up there. The rainfall is moderate, the climate is cold, and you can have long cold sun winters and short cool summers. So the summer, sh now they get a lot of daylight, but the summer season is very short. So it's just maybe two months of summer, maybe three. So you have your evergreen trees. Think of Christmas trees. So Christmas trees, a lot of them come from um, the boreal forest. A lot of them come from the temperate deciduous forest too, but a lot of them come from your boreal forest. So your coniferous and evergreen trees, again, think Christmas trees, your fir trees. Now animals hibernate. Think of bears. There's a lot of bears that live up there and they will hibernate during the cold winter and then feed and gorge themselves in the summer. So there's long daylight in the summer and they have enough time to just really, really gorge themselves. And then last but not least, we have our biome, the chaparral. And so here it is, Southern California. We, there's not a lot of chaparral around the world, 
it's really only Southern California in the US, not all of Southern California, because there's desert here too as well. But near the coast, uh, you're gonna have chaparral. It's also surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, so Spain and Israel and Italy will have chaparral. Southern Australia has some and Chile has some. So our biome is kind of unique because we, our biggest rainfall is in the winter and it's not like a ton of rain, except when we have an El Nino, which you'll study later, but we have moderate rainfall in the winter and then dry summers. We're almost everywhere else in the world has rainy summers and we don't, we have about four or five months of no rain in the summer and that is unusual. Now it's normal to us, but it is not typical of the rest of the country and the rest of the world. So our winters are mild, it's not very cold, but our summers are really hot. Now we have evergreen shrubs. Now, sometimes they don't look very green, but what evergreen means is the leaves don't fall off the trees. So it's the opposite of deciduous. Our shrubs and our trees are also adapted to and dependent on fires. So a lot of the seeds in the chaparral get dispersed with fires and they also germinate with fires. And so our plants rely on fire um, to grow properly. And that's because they were adapted to fires. The chaparral has been burning for centuries, but long before humans settled here and it continues to burn. Uh, we are also influenced by oceans, so we have an oceanic influence in terms of our climate, and so that's why we're not quite desert, we're kind of in between. We're not quite desert, so we're chaparral, but we are dry, but we get a little bit more rain than the desert. And that's it for our biome.